Today on The Midweek Move, we're talking about an angry mob and a case of mistaken identity. to the midweek move i'm dallas i'm so glad you guys have hit the play button today whether you're watching us on facebook or maybe you're checking us out on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, or spotify wherever it is hey thank you for being part of our community here today and i am excited about today because once again we have joining us my good friend carlos renfro carlos how you doing man i'm doing good dallas how you guys doing out there oh man it's going to be a great day here with you because I just like hearing you talk sometimes. <laughs> it's fun, man, catching <laughs> up with you, man. And, and the word of God just kind of molds it all together. Right. It's a blessing. We've said this several times over the over the course. Of, this is like episode 14 now yeah. of, of it. Is that what I love about these midweek moves is that this is a casual conversation about the scriptures, real life. And I hope that Absolutely. this has been the same for you guys, learning how to to talk through the scriptures together with your friends and your family. And like we're friends and yeah. we're just we're just talking about the word together. Yep, talking about the scripture. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I do want to remind you guys, check the last week's episode because last week Pastor Scott and I were actually in a whole nother state talking with our friend yes. Mike Conaway. And uh, that's a really great episode. You guys want to check that out. But today we're continuing the story in Acts chapter 14. Woo. Wow, 14. I cannot believe we're already here. Yes, chapter 14. <laughs> I think the last time I was here, I said the book of Acts was the, ap- the action movie of the Bible. Yeah. If, if that's the action movie of the Bible, then chapter 14 is the fight scene. Oh, man. <laughs> a couple of fight scenes, it seems like. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, and last week in the again we're, we're with Mike Conaway. We talked about lots of crazy stuff, some demon possession. We talked about uh, some uh, some troubles in Antioch. And now we're continuing on in verse fourteen, uh, starting in verse one. Now it happened in Iconium. Is that how you say that? Iconium. Yes. Iconium. That they went together to the synagogue of the Jews, and so spoke with that a great multitude, uh, both of Jews and Gentile Greeks, believed. So we have. Um, our, our our leaders of the of the church right now, <laughs> Paul, yeah. and then they're they're in Iconium and yes. they're preaching in a synagogue and we got a mixture of Jews and Greeks coming to faith at the same time. Verse two, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Uh, verse three, therefore they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders, and to be done by their hands. All right, what is happening here? All right, well, they're continuing what they're doing. Um, Paul and Barnabas are out. Now they're in Iconium, and they're in their tradition, if you, even if you go back a little farther, Paul's tradition was wherever there were, Jew, there were Jews there was to go into the synagogue, and he would expound upon how the scriptures point that Jesus of Nazareth was the Christ. Right. And this was this was his tradition was to go in and to reason with them. And he goes into that area. He does that, and it says here that 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 there was belief on both sides that there were some Greeks and some Jews that believed what Paul was saying that his reasoning was sound and. And there are people that didn't like that, so they're <laughs> they're trying to trying to run some interference to stop the gospel from going forward. Right. Well, now what I love here is verse three says, "Therefore, because they saw this happening, mm-hmm. Paul and and um, and the other leaders, they're like, hey, we got to stick around here, and yeah. we need to we yeah. need to take care of this continue ministry. I feel like sometimes uh, there's this like shotgun mentality of the gospel. We're going to throw it out there and not worry about right. the care." Uh, but they really felt the need. We need to stay here in Iconium mm-hmm. and take care of the situation here. And it's interesting because it says, uh, "Who uh, bearing, bearing witness to, uh, to the word of His grace, suggesting the message primarily being spoken here is about the grace of God Himself yes, yes. for the people in this area, and that God was blessing that by allowing um, the um, them to operate in signs and wonders. Right. Yeah, you know, we see this several times in the scripture that God at that time was backing was backing up their words with accompanying miracles and signs and wonders, saying, "Hey, this is the truth. Believe these guys because God God's power was backing up God's word." Right. Now the the vocabulary here is God was making this happen. Right. And this is going to become key later down about the fact that Luke is pointing out specifically that this isn't Paul and Barnabas that are, that are doing all this. They don't have the power. Right. It's God's making this happen yes. through them. And again, that's yes. going to become key towards the end of this chapter. All right, picking up verse 4. But the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. 
Now, it's interesting because this is the first time Luke's actually addressed Paul or identified him as an as apostle, apostle, Yes, uh, which has brought some, some interesting conversation in the past about um, what exactly is an apostle. Right. Uh, there are some that believe specifically that an apostle is only one of those who saw Jesus specifically right. in his life and his resurrection. Right. Uh, Paul doesn't necessarily meet those requirements. Right. Um, he, wa- he saw Jesus post-resurrection, mm-hmm. but not during it. Uh, so it seems to suggest that Apostle goes beyond just the original 12. Right, right. Okay. So, uh, but Apostles, verse 5. And when a violent attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lyst- Lystra mm-hmm. in Derby, uh, cities of Lyconia, and uh, to the surrounding region. I apologize if I'm butchering these words for you guys. <laughs> well, welcome to the geography part of the Bible. <laughs> Verse 7, and there, and they were preaching the gospel there. All right, what has happened just now? Well, well, the 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 preaching of the gospel now has become contentious to the point where it's not just contentious, what's dangerous. Mm-hmm. And so it seems like here, once they had some, some problems there, that the Jews were able to stir up enough dissension toward what they're preaching to try to get them all together to start to stone them right them being smart them being smart and caring for their life they um they left and they went a little bit farther south to Lystra and Derby right. um, into that little region they're still kind of in the same area there um but they went a little bit farther south just to kind of protect themselves but they didn't stop what they were doing That's they it. continued to preach the gospel even when they went um even when they had to leave the fleet from being stoned to death exactly and that's what I, that, I think that's key right there is sometimes we we face opposition and it's discouraging. People are like, oh. right. He didn't stop. No. Like, these guys were like, we're going to continue the next place. They're following the, the instructions given to them by Jesus, shaking the, di- the dust off of their feet. Right. But they continued doing what they were going to do. And that's key when you know what God has given you and what he's purposed you to do, when you know what your calling is, that follows you everywhere. Mm-hmm. That doesn't just shut off in one place, or it's not just, okay, when I'm not at work, or it's not just, you know, only when I'm not around my family, or or when I'm in a pulpit, or, or when I'm with the with the youth or that when God is giving you something to do, it follows you everywhere you, where you go. And right. God is with you. God is with you in that calling and that they were determined to operate in what God had called them to do, what Jesus had told them to do, right. no matter where they were. So let me ask you this, because you've, you've done ministry in a variety of different places and a variety of different uh, atmospheres. When you faced opposition, how do you find that resolve to move on and continue to preach the gospel and do what God's called you to do well, in the, your manner? Well, you have to know and have confidence. First of all, it's a relational thing. You have to have, know and have confidence in what God told you mm. and who God has purposed you and called you to be. Mm-hmm. And when you're able to do that, you're able to. It's just like we always talk about being, knowing, and doing. Right. When you have that identity in place, know who you are in Christ, know what God is saying. You have confidence to go out and go forward and do that. Right. And you know that God, just his promise, he said it in Matthew 28, that I'm with you, man, even to the end of the world, that nothing's going to change because people change. God doesn't change. When you have that confidence, you can just continue to move forward. Exactly, exactly. It really is boiled down to us taking the time to remind ourselves of what God is saying. Yes. Remind ourselves of what he says that we are mm-hmm. and what we can do. And then just walking that out. I think it's yes. key. A lot of people, they, they remind themselves, they know things, but they don't actually put action to it. And I yes. think that's a scary step for people. But right. once we move... Man, it's like a snowball effect sometimes. Right, and that's the encouraging part about reading the book of Acts is that you get to see people walking that out and playing and going through and even going through adversity and still doing what God called them to do. And and it's kind of a testament of what God is able to do even when things aren't easy. Word. Good stuff. All right, next next verse, verse 8. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a crippled man from his mother's womb who had never walked. All right, so this is a, a man who's never walked before. Mm-hmm. This is somebody that, this is very reminiscent to what we saw in yeah, Acts yeah, chapter, chapter 2. Three. Yeah, chapter 2. And um, was it 2 or 3? I can't remember now. <laughs> you guys go back and find it. <laughs> but it's a situation where this is a man that the, the community knows. Mm-hmm. They've seen him before. Verse 9. This man heard Paul speaking, Paul observing him intently in seeing that he had faith to be healed. I think the vocabulary is interesting. He observed him intently. Very interesting. What does that mean to you? 
Well, well, it it wasn't something that was glancing, that was passing. That as he was speaking, it's like he's keying in on this guy, and mm-hmm. he's he's looking at him with purpose, with in, intently means with intent, right? And that you know that he he notices something and it's piqued his interest, right? It's almost like Paul was intentionally looking for opportunity mm-hmm. to let God move, to use him to do some stuff, right? Um, not that he was going to make it happen, but right. he was intentionally going, okay, this guy really is seeking the Lord. And he really, he was, and so it was a matter of he was, um, he was just operating the mindset, being intentional about looking for these opportunities. Right, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, verse ten, and so with a loud voice, <laughs> he said with a loud voice, "Stand up straight on your feet." Man, that's some boldness right there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine just looking across the room and just, and you know, it doesn't even record that he said anything to this guy before this, before he tells him to stand up. A guy who had never walked a day in his life. Right. And just yells across the room and tells him to stand up on his feet. That's, <laughs> that's just wild to me. That is what, like, he, there was nothing, it wasn't like with uh, Peter where he goes out to the guy and goes, grabs his hand and pulls him off the ground. Right. Yeah. He's just, hey, you, and stand up. And with Peter, the guy at the, um, at the gate initiated the conversation with him. Right. You know, this, <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy listening and going, I think I believe. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, verse 11. Now, when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices saying uh, in the Lysonian language, so this is a language that, uh, Paul and Barnabas weren't, didn't understand. The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas was called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. This isn't good. No, this isn't good. You know, <laughs> here you are trying to do your best to represent God, and 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 the wheels are turning in the minds of these pagan non-believers and they're, and they're associating it with their system of worship. Right. Not just that. I, I did some research because I thought this is, this is really strange that they just jumped to this right. at the time. In this area, I did some research. This is cool. In this area, there's actually an old uh, poem that they have in this area about Zeus and Hermes visiting this area at one point mm-hmm. and doing life there for a while and they never realized it. Right. So in the background there of these people's minds, it's a matter if Zeus and Hermes ever show up again, we need to make a deal about. We're going to be ready. We're going to be excited about <laughs> Zeus and Hermes. So this wasn't just like it was a okay. We're just going to describe this. This is a culture right that is posed looking for something spiritual. Right. It's a backdrop of them almost looking for a fulfillment of their own prophecies of some sort. Exactly. They're looking for something, and it's just that they've walked into a situation like oh. Okay. <laughs> right. So how do they respond here? Verse 13. Uh, oh, it gets even worse. Verse 13. The priests of Zeus, whose temple was in front of the city, brought oxen and uh, garland to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. But the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this. They tore their clothes and ran in among the multitudes, crying out, saying, Men, why are you doing these things? Who are uh, who uh, we also are men with the same nature as you, and preach to you that you should turn away from these useless things to the living God, who made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are in them. Wow. Uh, continue on verse sixteen. And in bygone generations, allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. All right, we're going to rewind this a little bit here. Why are they ripping their clothes off here? Well, that's uh, that is a traditional sign of grief and mourning and right. anguish in the Jewish culture. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll see that in several instances. You'll see that um, with Job and Job and his friends and his mourning and his troubles. They would they would tear their clothes and right. you no, know, they would fast or put ashes on. So this is a this is a a picture of agony of of when when they see blasphemous things or, or things of that nature. Here they are trying to represent God, and it's just kind of. To me, I see them in my mind of them like, what? Why are they bringing all these animals in here? What are they doing? You know, and and like you said, they didn't quite understand what they were saying in their own language. And these guys are you no know, prepping to sacrifice to them as as deities, right? And then the light bulb goes off. Oh, they're doing this for us, right? Right? No, this isn't right. No, 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 no. This this is the opposite of what we're trying to teach you. Right? We're trying to teach you to leave these things behind and turn to the true and living God. Exactly. I love the fact that there was an urgency to it. I feel like some people, and and within the circles we run, we see people who operate in the gifts and they bring healing. Yes. But sometimes in our circles that we, you and I run in, there are those who like the attention that the the operating in the gifts and signs give to them. Yes. Whereas reality is it's, it's God moving through them. That's why, again, it was so important that I think Luke pointed out the fact that God was doing the miracle signs through them. He allowed it to take place. 
and here they are doing it again, and they're making sure that people know this isn't us. Right. Yeah. I'm not bringing healing. I'm just a. I'm a conduit. I'm. I'm a tool in the in the hands of the master. Right. That's bringing the healing, and these people are falsely ascribing that to them. And I think far too often there are some people in our circles who. They go, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I bring healing to these people. Right, and you have to think about also considering the type of persecution that these people are going through, how easy it would be to make their lives easier by allowing people to assume that they have some sort of power influence that wasn't theirs. Absolutely. You even go back to chapter 10 in Acts when Cornelius shows up and sees Peter. He falls down and worships him, and Peter immediately tells you, nope, you know, kind of, the, the, we don't do that here, you know, right. <laughs> reference. And he tells him to stand up. No, no, I'm I'm. I'm a man just like you, and in all of this, and in 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 the book of Acts, they make a point to point all these things back to Jesus, back right. to God. Right, exactly. Now it's interesting. His approach, their approach here with dealing with the the uh, Gentiles, is very different from when he's with Jews. Normally, when he's with Jews, he's like, "All right, let me take you to the Old Testament, take you back to to God." Here, he's having to take these guys back to a more base level of understanding yes. mm-hmm. of, of faith. Because there's not that common ground of, of belief in, you know, when you come to the seed of Abraham here. Right. Exactly. There's these taking back. So he's saying, look, we're, we're men like you. Stop stop worshiping us. Get rid of these useless things. Mm-hmm. And he says, preach to you that you should turn away from these useless things and turn to the living God who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all things that are in them. Uh, again, verse 16, who by bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own way. So he's saying that, look, you need to worship the true God, the one right. that created everything. And he's let you kind of pass for a little bit right. with doing what you're doing. However, even though that he hasn't just been directly speaking to you and, and doing some stuff, verse 17, nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our, our hearts with food and gladness. And with these uh, sayings, oh, we'll, we'll come back to that. So he's he's bringing back to a, a base level of this is who God is. Right. This is what we would call a cosmological arg- argument. Right. The, the, the testimony of God through nature and through the world around mm-hmm. and uh, observations. And so he's t- telling them, saying, look, this is what this is who God really is. Right. This is who you need to worship. Right. Now there are some people who are like, well, is this all he said? And a lot most theologians go, this is probably just a snippet of what. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah. And that Luke was like, Luke Luke assumes that us as readers know Paul's way of presenting the gospel. Right. It's just that this is new information that we've never seen him present right. because of a different audience. So we can assume that he went on to go, now let me tell you about Jesus. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he does that even if you go back and read Romans chapter 1. He talks about the invisible things that um, give testament to God, that, that how he can hold you no know, men without excuse because you know he even he even makes shadow of that that creation itself testifies of God absolutely and he he does this it's, it makes it seems like he does this you know commonly when it comes to to non Jewish believers right. where he have that common ground of creation itself to, to use as a platform as a launching pad to get to Jesus in his preaching absolutely I really believe that if you wanted to get a better glimpse of what he actually preached here in this moment. Um, read the book of Romans. Probably very, very much of yep. the presentation of the gospel there is what you would have happened in person. Again, like I said, just Luke is trying to give us just the information that is new to the reader. Right. Absolutely. All right, verse 18. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing uh, to them. So basically, they're like, they barely stopped these people from right. doing this. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, are you sure you don't want us to, you know, it's right. just a little good. Like, no, no, really? It's okay? <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> we don't play that game here. <laughs> All right, so we've left this situation here. Verse 19. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came uh, there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Well, that, that escalated quickly. <laughs> The fact that these are these Jews, they they fall, they came from Antioch specifically right. to cause issues. Right, yeah. Like these guys are the uh I don't want to go there, but they these guys they specifically are going to cause problems for uh Paul and Barnabas. Yeah, because they had previously been in Antioch, they had previously been in Iconium. Right. They left there because of the threat of being stoned. And these guys have gathered up and have come even farther south to follow <laughs> them with their rocks in their pockets. Right. Now what's interesting is I, I gotta wonder. 
what do you think Paul's, or, or Paul's thoughts were about these people since this is exactly what he used to do? That's a very interesting thought. Um, and I, you almost get the, you almost get the, the idea that he, that he gets where their zeal is coming from, that they think they're doing the right thing. Right. Um, but, but yeah, this is, this is his, his past. Yeah. He was, he was given, he was given authority from the chief priest to go into, and to make waves and to make trouble um, for the church and for the preaching of the gospel. And now he's on the other side of that ledger. Mm-hmm. What's interesting is he probably might even, he might have even known some of these guys before. He may have, and they may have even known him. Just that, like again, I was one of those thoughts I had earlier when I was studying. I was like, man, that's this takes it to another level. When we realize Paul's having to go, man, this is what I did. Yeah, he's coming face to face with his past. Yeah, absolutely. And yet he continues, verse twenty. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city, and the next day departed with Barnabas and Deborah. Now. They 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 stoned him so badly they thought he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> now while it is miraculous that he got back up and went back in, it probably wasn't a like a supernatural like oh it's a full miracle. But he had some resolve. Like, yeah. He's just like, yeah, that's some determination. <laughs> that even even this you know is not going to stop me from for what I'm for what I'm supposed to do. Right. No, it gives a, gives more weight to what he talked about in Romans chapter eight. Where he talked about all of the things that he that he'd been through for the sake of the gospel, mm -hmm. you know, and that you know that that even all these things still work to, together for the good of you know of the believer. So, absolutely. All right, verse twenty one. And when they had preached the gospel to the city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. Isn't this where the people were that just attacked him? Yep, it sure is. And he said, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm coming back to you guys. All right, verse 22. Strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them and continuing in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Wow. Now, is he saying to the people that we have to go through hardships to become saved? No, he's not saying that we have to go through hardships to become saved. He's saying that there's a press, there's a presence of hardships once we are saved mm. because the world is the world is anti God. Right. The world is the opposite of the message that they're preaching, and so there's going to be resistance to the gospel from the kingdom of darkness. Um, having this conversation not long ago with my wife that in many times and many places in the churches, we convinced ourselves that if it's not easy, then it's not God. Mm. And we, we, we walk away from things that, that we should press into or press through because they're difficult. And we've somewhere in our mind have fixed in our head that it's just about blessing. It's just about, you know, and if, 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 God in pouring out all of this favor in the circumstance or in the situation that somehow I'm out of the will of God because things are difficult. Mm, right. So like it, like, like what he's saying, the Christian walk is not all sunshine, rainbows and unicorns. It is definitely not. There is, there will be trials. There will be tribulations. These things don't save you. You going into like some people, they, they look for trouble, right? They look for opportunity to be offended. They look for opportunity to be like, Oh, I'm being persecuted. Right. That does nothing for you. That suffering puts a notch <laughs> in my belt. Right. That that's nothing to brag about. That's just a that's just a product of doing stuff. At the same time, the other flag of is people go, well, if there's something wrong, like you said, then I must be doing something. No, yeah. it's just sometimes it's just right. life as a we, Christian. We live in a fallen world, and there 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 are two sides to this battle, and and sometimes being on the right side of the battle is the most difficult part. Exactly. So. We have them come back. They're strengthening, and, and it's interesting because they're in the exact areas they've been thrown out before. They've been persecuted. The people who originally heard these words, they understood the context of going, "Yeah, I'm sure there are people. They're like, we feel like we need to quit. We need to we need right. to get out of this Christian thing." And right. strengthen them. No, no, don't stop. Like, like this is part of the of yeah. the growth. This Just is imagining seeing a, a battered Paul with his resolve walking back into that place and saying, hey, guys, if I'm not quitting, you're not. Right. You know, we we can get through this thing. It's about it's about things that are eternal, mm. and that's the most important thing. Push through this thing. We're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's just, unfortunately, we're going to have to walk through some tribulation to do it. Exactly. Exactly. Verse 23. And so when they had appointed elders 
in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they believed. So they're establishing leaders in the church. Mm-hmm. It's not just a matter of like, well, you look good, you look popular. Right. No, it's they're, they're, they're praying, praying and fasting over yep. these guys. Yep. They're, look, they're looking to see what God's will is. Verse 24, and after they had passed through Pisidia and Pamphylia, I don't that's, know. What I, that's what I would say, Pamphylia. Sounds good. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, when they had preached the word in Pergia, they went down to Attilia. Geography, guys. Yep. <laughs> From there, they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had uh, completed. Now... When they had come to and gathered in the church together, they reported all that God had done with them, and they had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. Any thoughts on the last section right there? Well, it shows that this wasn't just an overnight venture, that they spent time there, that they they connected with people there. They went to all of the churches there, which it 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 appeared that there were multiple works established there that they went and they went about the business, praying, fasting, appointing elders, making sure things were in order. Right. Um, they Once they got all the way down to Perk, which is far the south, they sailed back to Antioch, so they had to hop on the boats because um, um, Perk was right there at the, bottom of the, at the bottom of the peninsula, and they sailed back to, to Antioch. So this takes time. This isn't hopping on the on the on a flight on a red eye and going to the to the next city. This took them a, this took them time right. and labor and work and investment right. to see the kingdom of God shored up, to see people encouraged. And through all of that, how difficult and tiring that could be. Once once they got got, got back to the saints, they just kind of encouraged them in all that God had done. Right. And bringing faith to the Gentiles, even though it was very difficult and almost could have cost them their lives. Yeah, absolutely. This was a weeks, if not month long venture. Yes. Months, plural, yeah. Yeah. for these guys. This wasn't a, hey, we're going to do a week, uh, um, a week long missus trip to Mexico. Right. But hey, we're going to make sure we're going to schedule a fun day in the middle of it. Cause, right. Like, this is their life, man. Yeah. This is what, yeah, this is what they're, they're literally investing blood, sweat, and tears into this thing. And they're doing it for God's purposes and not for their own glory. Right. So good. So good. Well, any last thoughts on our applications on this chapter for folks? Don't give up. Mm. Don't quit. Um, all the time when I when I go through things that can be difficult in my own life, I turn back to the scripture and I remind myself of what other people did so that the gospel could be brought my way. Mm. So, and it gives me the encouragement to say, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop. Yeah. I can't quit. Um, I'm not going through it. I I have never been stoned and thrown out of the city. <laughs> God help me. And I hope I never will be. Yes, Lord. <laughs> but I but with those things in mind, somebody paid a price so that the gospel could be brought to me. So good. And I want to be willing to allow that to encourage me so that I'm reminded to not quit, to press in, to go forward. That God has something that even when it's hard, that that God has this beautiful plan to use what we go through, even suffering what we go through to bring his glory out of it. Word. Absolutely. I want to remind you guys that this, they're being persecuted, not because of them. The scriptures say the world hates us because they hated God first. Yep. They hated Jesus first. That's why it was so important that for, for Paul and Barnabas to be like, Oh no, no, we're just normal people. We're just here representing God because it's, it's who we represent. That's who it is. Yes. The persecution we face has nothing to do with you as an individual. It has everything with the God that we represent. And if we put our fo- our trust in him, we put our faith in him, he will get us through it every single time. Yeah, one foot in front of the other. That's it. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking time to listen to this podcast. Reach out to us. Let us know your thoughts on how it encouraged you. How have you been challenged by it? You can email us at mediahub at thbstreetport.com. If you want more information about The Healing Place or help support the ministry of The Healing Place, visit our website, thpstreetport.com. There will be links in the description down below for you guys. And uh, and also, as always, we'll remind you, share this out. Feel free to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or uh, any other uh, review sites. I figure Spotify you can leave a review now. Yeah, sure can. So y'all do that. (laughs) Until next time, have a great week.